We kick off the Saskatchewan leg of our trucked up coffee stop Canada wide tour. I can't wait to find out what's in store for you and I as we make our way across this province and discover all the secrets it holds in its vast expanse. From the central city of Saskatoon up to Prince Albert, then down to the southern capital of Regina and all stops in between, we'll test this landscape and the distances and the dangers of running out of charge in the middle of frickin' nowhere. There's only one way to find out what's gonna happen and that's to go and test it. And that's exactly what we're gonna do. for wide open spaces, it's actually going to get flatter. You can see a storm coming a day away. Like in the city where you'd be standing in your bathroom taking a pee and you're looking at your neighbor. Your neighbor is like 20 kilometers away. Yeah, you can literally communicate by smoke signals. Kind of like that idea. Buy myself some pigeons. Here it's a different type of spying. Get yourself a telescope. Hold on, Chuck. Let me get this focused. There's Billy Bob. Oh. I think he's having bacon for lunch. Remember those wind turbines? The wind literally tried to rip the door off my truck when I got out. Fantastic news in Swift Current. Jeez. We've got Tesla superchargers. We've got the co-op chargers. We've got Petro Canada and came over for my first Saskatchewan trucked up stop in Swift Current. And now I'm going to be, uh, I came all the way over uh, 320 kilometers and I was in a headwind like this. So it ate, ate my range, but I still came into town with about 60 kilometers left, which was still awesome. But now I got to juice up because I've only got about 16% in my batteries. To get me all the way up to Saskatoon, which is a bit of a leg. Looking good so far though. Really happy with what I'm seeing here in Swift Current. It's so nice having the uh, NAX adapter because I'm able to charge up a lot faster. I was over at the co-op, it worked perfectly. I just plugged it in and went but it only got me up to about 45 kilowatts. It's supposed to be 100. I just decided it's a two to three minute drive over to Tesla, but I'm gonna save about 30 minutes by being at these instead of the co-op. I went inside to pick something up to drink. I said, wow, this is something else. They go, what? I said, well, you know, it's the, the wind outside. He goes, oh, it's a, it's a bit breezy. The race is on. I have lost an hour. I'm hoping on gaining it back, but I've had to call ahead to the cafe. I knew certain people were going to be showing up at Delish by Tish in Saskatoon. So I'm racing against the clock here, trying not to speed, trying to be a good boy. Uh, luckily, the Tesla supercharger in Swift Current worked out to have been the right choice. I would have been screwed, but it got me charged up fast at a cost, though. Being a non-Tesla owner using Tesla superchargers, they bilk you in Canada. I'm spending double when I use Tesla over almost everybody else. Well, Electrify Canada is still pretty expensive. Chevron's pretty expensive. But Tesla is by far the most costly to use. I'm getting within 30 to 40% discount off the price of gasoline using Tesla. They want you to sign up as a member and then you get more discount. But I don't plan on using a lot of Tesla superchargers unless I'm doing road trips. Even then, when I can charge up a co-op for half, or I can charge up with BC Hydro and be 40 cents a kilowatt cheaper, that's crazy. At Tesla, 75 cents. At one place I was at, 95 cents showed up. I gotta double check that, because I thought that's gotta be wrong. 60 bucks later, or whatever the hell they billed me, I've got myself 80% charge. At 80%, I pull because, again, it's going slower after 80. I've got almost a three hour drive. So I have about 35 kilometers left by the time I get to Saskatoon. But this wind is wreaking havoc on all of my numbers. If this wind was behind me, just put a sail on it. I get my jacket up there, tie it on with a big pole. Unfortunately, I'm riding into it. And it's buffeting me and pushing me all over the road. And yeah, there we go again. Just It just hits you every now and then. And you just get these gusts and it just kind of grabs the wheel. You think about those guys driving the semi-trucks, wow, that's a skill. We're gonna go for it, we're gonna see if we can get to good old Saskatoon's and Saskatchewan. I love Saskatoon berries. That's what I want, Saskatoon pie. Mm -hmm. 
I left Swift Current with 60 extra kilometers of range to make my way to Saskatoon. I've been driving into it now for an hour and a half and it just told me that I can't make it to Saskatoon. Not a place you want to run out of juice. We got one hope ahead. And that's in the community of Outlook. If that doesn't work, I'm gonna push for Rosetown. They've got a level two charger, supposedly. Might be there for the evening, but I won't have to call, call a tow truck or walk. I've gotta change direction, change course. My time of arrival still shows that I could make it by 5 p.m. when I had scheduled a 4 p.m. And I had put forward that I'd be there at five instead of four, but I can't make it. It's even getting worse, actually. I'm just watching it drop. I have to make this detour, which means I won't arrive in Saskatoon until about quarter to six, six o'clock. Almost two hours past my trucked up stop. So very disappointing. There's been more headwinds than just the wind. We've got 104 kilometers of range left to this place called Outlook, dog-legging it through these vast fields going on secondary highway. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with this. I've got to admit, it's only because I've got a time that I want it to get to. And that's what sucks. We live in a world of schedules and time limits. So that's important. Here is very, very difficult to do that. One or two glitches, you're off by hours. If this fast charger isn't working, I've got to go off a level two. A level two is equivalent to my house, my home charger unit off a NEMA 1450 plug. Probably around 40 to 50 amp, if you're lucky. To charge up, full would be like seven eight well not even full like to 80 percent would be like eight ten hours it's it's meant to be somewhere where you charge overnight or you charge the whole day but if that's the way that i have to get to saskatoon then i only have to put maybe 10 percent in so it might take me a couple of hours but if i were me i wouldn't wait around for an hour to some guy in a truck i hate making people wait either way sucks 20k to go a little bit of praying. Here it is, the moment of truth, judgment day. It's looking promising because this is the largest community that I've seen since leaving Swift Current. Outlook, the irrigation capital of the world, is pretty big. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not small. And uh, it's kind of nice. It's got stuff in it. It's got a grocer, it's got, it's got stuff. The largest sign in the town is the co-op. It looks like the co-op's kind of filling the role almost like BC Hydro is in BC. Like they're not fast chargers, but they're not slow. Like 100 kilowatts seems common. I don't know what these are gonna be. Oh, I'm going to the co-op sign and it's telling me that I've gone to the wrong place. It's not at the co-op convenience store. We have flow chargers and they are on. This is good. Well, let's go check it out and see if we can find out which one of these babies charges as fast as the, or they're both 50s. Houston, we have a problem. It's saying here, vehicle detected, hold your card near the reader. Here's my flow card on a flow machine. Author, oh, authenticating. Unknown card, access denied. You gotta be kidding me. WTF here, folks. There's no credit card means of payment on these machines. Option two, flow app. We have liftoff. It worked off the app. That's the dumbest, backwaters, idiotic, stupid thing I've ever heard of. And then I got into my flow app and it said insufficient funds. And I'm looking at it, it's got 50 bucks in it. I go back into the account, I check, it says, your wallet has $50.31 in it. I'm like, so why does it keep giving insufficient funds? So then I gotta go back in the app, I put in whatever the minimum was, then it showed that I got $55.31, and boom, it approves me on the machine, pre-authorizing me for $25. It's great having these things in these remote locations, but the only reason these are here isn't because of flow. They're here because of co-op, and I wanna thank them profusely. Whatever the co-op is doing, they're electrifying, they're creating a network like BC Hydro did in BC. I'm seeing it in Alberta and Saskatchewan. I just wish they'd gone with their own co-op connects that have been so reliable, rather than using these flow units, which, well, their flow. Saved again from hitchhiking down a road with no traffic. So there's some good news for people traveling across Canada. Like the gentleman I met in the Rivian R1T coming from Montreal the other way, his big trip, 
he found the same thing. Co-op came through for him. I'm back on the road. I've got 170 kilometers of range. I only need to go 90 to get to Saskatoon. I'm going to look in Saskatoon for a hotel that has an overnight level two charger. We all know about the prairies. I lived in them for a long time and uh, the prairie winds. They'll They'll burn your gas, your diesel, your electrons, whatever it is, if you're running into a headwind. It's gonna slow you down, and it takes a lot more energy to push through it. Lesson learned, let's take a look at a map for a moment, and let's take a look at plug share, and look at just the DC fast chargers, and you'll see a line. You'll see that there's like this delineation, that just everything in Saskatchewan is to that point, and then over 50% of the length of Saskatchewan has nothing, zero fast chargers anywhere. There's, there's no infrastructure there at all. You can't really make a business case for putting in fast chargers when you're servicing three guys, a farmer and a chicken. If you're going up there, you better bring some jerry cans because gasoline stations aren't exactly abundant. Good morning, trucked up guys and gals. I am in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. I met with a gentleman named Matt at Delish by Tish Coffee House Bistro and Bakery. It's a freaking awesome little spot. And he stuck around for two hours to meet me. I cannot believe it. He's one of the individuals directly involved in the Electric Vehicle Association here in Saskatchewan. And I've got a special treat coming up. In fact, I'm so happy about it. I'm sticking around in Saskatoon for an extra few days just so I can bring it to you. We're going to use then Saskatoon as our home base. We're going to be going off to a place called Prince Albert. It's the last registered fast charger in the entire province. And I'm not even making it up to the 50% mark. It's just absolutely barren after that. Now there's still some big communities. There's one or two, I think LaRange is somewhere around 2000 people. And I think there's a concerted effort to get a DC fast charger in there. So there are things in motion, but if you're wanting to travel north or take a camping trip or go up to the lake somewhere in Sask Saskatchewan, north of that point, you're out of luck in an EV. You're just not doing it unless you can find some accommodating campsites that'll let you plug in that have NEMA 1450 or TT30 plugs that you'll be able to utilize. Outside of that, you're toast. I'm going to uh, Prince Albert for my trucked up stop early today. It shows that it's only gonna take me a, a one and a half hours to get there and I'm only at nine and my trucked up stop is at noon. So I'm getting there an hour and a half early for a reason. I'm going to plug this into its 50 kilowatt flow fast charger, every flow fast charger in, in Saskatchewan. I haven't been able to find one that's 100 kilowatt. So we're going to plug into that puppy and we're going to just let it charge right up to 100% and then hit the road for Regina. It's a bit of a stretch again. I'm really pushing the limits. I'm looking around 380 to 400 kilometers. My truck has not been doing near its EPA because of course everything I'm doing is just fast highway, no braking, no mixed driving at all. Just pedal to the metal all the way. And that costs you. So 400, that's cutting it really close. And if I get those headwinds again, I'm mincemeat. The landscape has changed as we headed into Saskatoon last evening. I noticed that we went from just open fields to more more uh, shrub. Definite change to the landscape. It's still very flat. If you see a hill and you're like, oh my goodness, that's a hill. Uh, definitely more wetland, which I always like to see. It's good for wildlife. It's good for health, good for clean air. It's a great job filtering our, our country's water. We've got just around 120 kilometers or 70 miles to get to Prince Albert. All of this is new to me. I really like this. I've been in the prairies, but in Alberta, and I went across once, I believe it's North Battleford, Saskatchewan once in my teens, coming over from the Alberta border. I'm really enjoying this. It's a great opportunity to be able to see your country. Because I'm traveling with an EV, it kind of brings back memories of kind of that Route 66 type, where you went on a big adventure with your car, and you didn't know if there was gonna be a gas station, everything, everything was kind of like a, a big adventure. I'm really feeling that. I, I feel like a kid. Of course, I, I, I I am a kid. That's why I'm selling t-shirts that say never adult moment. Yes, that's a plug. Uh, you can get one of those down below. I love how they've left all these sections, wa like uh, waterways, natural dells, wetlands. Yeah, that's really smart. 
there's not a cloud in the sky. So whatever that massive windstorm was yesterday, it almost blew me off the road, um, almost blew me into the middle of next week. It blew everything out of here. We arrived here at the community of Oster. I think it's got quite a population here. Now we're not far from Saskatoon, but this would be a great place for a charger. Oster has nothing. There's the difference that we're seeing between Alberta and BC and Saskatchewan. If we take those three provinces, you could usually find, even in Alberta, unless you're going up north, as we've talked about before in this video right here on my Alberta trip, you'll see that there's an opportunity of some sort or another. Even J1772s, they're frequent. I'm not seeing that here, that we don't have those opportunities. There are pretty vast distances between chargers. Going 150 kilometers or so to Prince Albert, that's reasonable. That's right on par with what we've seen with BC Hydro's installs across BC. Every 150 kilometers, they had a, a fast charger. None of that's happening here in Saskatchewan. How, how I passed Prince George and I said, I can drive another you know, 1,200 kilometers or 700 miles north. I, I can't. This goes another 1,200 kilometers. There's another 700 miles of Saskatchewan that is inaccessible for an EV truck. It's not good. Sask Power is Saskatchewan's kind of power provider similar to like BC Hydro and they have this golden opportunity to transform Saskatchewan and it doesn't look like they're really embracing that. I've passed a lot of birds out in the fields in great flocks. Also seen quite a number fly overhead. Looks like they're all getting ready for their great migration south. There's not as many as there used to be when I was a boy by far. The numbers are, are kind of sad but it's nice to see really healthy populations are still around. I've seen lots of snow geese, Canada geese, mallards. Uh, different types of duck and it's kind of appropriate because I'm driving through at this very moment the turnoff for Duck Lake. That would make sense. And we've got another 50 kilometers to go or about 35 miles to reach our destination. We've got a, one or two more communities we'll pass through. Uh, every one of them doesn't have anything. This is an amazing highway. It's perfect condition. What's really shocking is there's not a lot of traffic. This is a big twinned highway. We got four lanes, two on either side with a nice partition in between. Very few cars. This is a Friday and it's well surfaced. It's a little undulating for obvious reasons. That's temperature related, but not a lot of cracking. So nicely done, Saskatchewan. We have arrived on the outskirts of Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. No problem at all got about four and a half kilometers to our destination where we're gonna sit down at Dr. Java's coffee house and we're arriving into town with hundred and ninety four kilometers of range much better than anticipated when I set out it said I had 318 kilometers this morning when I got up and jumped in the truck from the hotel and if we calculate out what we have now we are at 300 and almost 40 we've gained range again the wind was a major factor. Not having that has really done as well. And that's a cautionary tale because there should be a cushion left. It does a great job of calculating out, you know, your trip and where you need chargers. But when you look at some of your arrival times and the state of charge that you're in when you arrive, it, it leaves you like 7% or, oh, you'll arrive with 10% of range, or to say, well, don't charge up long. You only need to charge up this tiny little bit, off you go. But it's always cutting it close. 7% or 10% can vanish in a windstorm. We've got options for DC fast chargers. We've got one flow at 50 kilowatt, but it looks like there's a couple of charge points here in town I'm gonna go check out. They charge at 62.5. They're slow fast chargers, but not as slow fast chargers. It's getting closer to that 100 zone. That means I can probably charge at or slightly above 50 kilowatts, which would be nice. And we're gonna park in there. We've arrived here in town just after 10.30 in the morning. I've got a noon trucked up stop, so so far according to plan it seems that one of the capital uh, attractions here however happens to be a maximum security prison or something i'm driving by it now right next to a casino interesting that looks very promising charge point available ev charging and brought to you by sask power and the government of canada initiative here uh so that is great through that funding and it looks like we've got 
uh, support from some of our indigenous nations and here the Northern Lights Casino. So thanks to them for making this happen. Let's give it a shot. According to my app, BC Hydro is partnered with ChargePoint. So I am going to try, just for uh, shits and giggles, to charge this thing with my BC Hydro app. What's really cool about this station, take a look at this. It's already got a NAX, a, a NAX plug for Teslas and a CCS plug. That's pretty cool. That's what we're gonna start seeing. Instead of Chatamos and CCS, we're gonna start seeing NAX and CCS. Very neat. We are a go, creatively so. A couple of glitches here, not big deals. I tried to use the BC Hydro app and it wouldn't let me, but it turns out the charge point and flow have a partnership. Oh my goodness, that's good news. Those are the kind of innovations we need to see. So I went into my flow app and I was able to partner and get my it to work. The problem is I had to park all funny because the chargers are opposite depending on the type of vehicle that you have. And this one wouldn't pick up on either the charge point or the flow app. It was saying there was only one charger here, but there's two on the charge point. After I linked in with flow, flow had trouble finding this one. So I was parked on this side and it kept turning on the one on the other side. I just said heck with it. I just parked all Jimmy rigged to get that one plugged in without blocking this stall just in case somebody else comes in. You always want to be courteous whenever possible to ensure that you're not blocking people whenever possible. The other thing is it's saying that this can be done at 12.57 p.m. to 100%. And when I go into the flow to monitor how it's charging is doing, even though they're partners, it won't report. It just says that this station's in use. So I went back into the charge point app and sure enough, as soon as I opened the charge point app, it gave me all the details of my charge, which is great because I went through flow to bill it. So I didn't have to keep loading up all these different wallets. On top of that, when I went into charge point, uh, now it's showing two. <laughs> so now it's showing this one, which it didn't show before, which is just little buggy stuff, but it's easy. It charged up. It's working fine. It's charging at about 50 kilowatts, I believe, which is exactly what I wanted. I go to a 50 kilowatt fast charger with flow. I charge it like 30 or 35. The bad news is I've got, well, a penitentiary over there. I don't want to have coffee there. And then I've got a casino and the last thing I need to do is enter a casino. So I'm not gonna do that because it's so much fun in there. I'll get myself in so much trouble. I've been sitting on my big fat butt for so long inside my truck. I'm just gonna walk over to Dr. Java's. Hopefully it doesn't take me too long and then walk back before my truck is done charging up. That's the game plan right now. Really happy with how everything's gone so far here in Prince Albert. Nice having options. Here we are at Dr. Java's Coffee House in Prince Albert, which is uh, kind of cool because it's quite fitting. It's right next to the truck outfitters. I'm gonna pop in, load up, get some food, get some go-go juice, get back on the road. We're about 90% charged according to my phone. So I should be getting back a little late actually for the uh, for the charger. Might get a little bit of a idle charge hit. It's just charging faster than expected. It's charging my vehicle at 75. So really happy I chose charge point. Well, that went smoother than expected. I also needed that walk. I got in five miles or a little over eight kilometers. I needed to stretch my legs. Oh, that felt good. Met with two individuals, which was really nice. One of them from Quebec. I meet him in Prince Albert, which is really funny. I'm now gonna go for it down to Regina, the capital. It's a long way. It's well over 400 kilometers. I just charged to full and my truck's telling me I'm only getting 391 kilometers. This thing has an EPA of 515, but keep in mind, I bought this thing with only 25, 30 kilometers on the clock, 15 miles brand new. And it's at 7,500 kilometers or around, you know, 4,500 to 5,000 miles already <laughs> in a month. And all of that has been under these strenuous kind of headwinds and other things. What we're looking at as far as the trip so far, 35 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. That's a lot and that's not good. It's telling me, go to Saskatoon. You'll get there faster and you'll have lots of charging time. But I need to do this for you as well. You need to find out that you can get to places. We already been to Saskatoon. I'm gonna be going back to Saskatoon after Regina. So I'm doing a huge trip from Prince Albert all the way down 
to Regina, then all the way halfway back up to Saskatoon, where I'm going to be staying the next two nights and bringing you something very special. All of this would not be practical. I'll just go to Saskatoon and down, exactly what Ford's telling me to do. But I'm taking Plan B. It gives me two alternate trips. It says that I can get to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan in 341 kilometers. That's leaving me 50 kilometers of range. Does this sound familiar? I'm hoping I don't have headwinds. I'm hoping I don't have problems. And it gets me there just before 5 p.m. With only 50 kilometers to spare, it's a bit of a dangerous one. However, near Humboldt, Saskatchewan, I can detour, quite a big detour, but I can get to a charger if I have to. I hope. Somebody's got to break the road open for you. Might as well be a big fat old fart in a lightning. Let's go do it. Crap, change of plan. As soon as I started driving, Ford app started doing recalculating. It obviously decided that I didn't have as much range once I started moving. It's now telling me that I've got to go to Saskatoon if I plan to make it to my next trucked up stop before six. And I plan on being there by five because that's the time of it. So I'm gonna make it there. Back to Saskatoon, back to Regina. <sighs> But I'm going to try to take several of those routes and dogleg my way all over that part of Saskatchewan to find out what you're able to do. And I don't have a deadline tomorrow and I don't have a truck up stop tomorrow so I can go get myself into trouble. And I'm going to. Sure enough, I came out of Prince Albert and I hit a headwind now coming from the s southwest. So it has changed direction right into my face again. But my range isn't dropping at all. It's like taking historical data. I don't know what it's doing. I'm a dumbass. I'm just some fart with a truck. But the calculations that were running in the background decided I was more than able to go that route down to Moose Jaw, Saskatchewan, but I'd arrive closer to like six o'clock than five o'clock. And I'm not doing that again. This gets me there right on time, 5.02. My range when I recalculated is bang on. I'm glad I'm actually doing Saskatoon on the way back. I want to make sure I'm at my trucked up stop at five o'clock. It's already put me down now to 520. That's based upon that 50 kilowatt slow charger because it's now saying I need to spend more time there. And remember, it's 50 kilowatts. I'm not doing any of that. When we get to Saskatoon, I'm going to the Tesla supercharger and jacking it up as fast as I can, as quick as I can. And then we're going to recalculate and see what it says. We have stopped in Saskatoon plugged into the Tesla supercharger for exactly 10 minutes. I have 301 kilometers of range and 248 kilometers. So it's showing that I've got 53 extra. That hasn't worked out very well for us for the past two journeys in Saskatchewan. I did punch it in with Google and it said I'd be arriving at 506. And that's if I can get there without stopping. I'm down to 35 kilometers of cushion from 54 kilometers of cushion when I left. I've only driven 71 kilometers. I've lost 19 kilometers of range in 71 kilometers. Doesn't take a mathematician to work that one out. But we are now traveling southeast rather than south. And according to the road, it looks like there might be some more of that. Well, there's all kinds of surprises in Davidson, Saskatchewan. Here's one of them. These flow chargers were listed on the Ford navigation app as 50 kilowatt. I thought I'd just pop into PlugShare and see if there was anything else there. And they listed these at 100. And sure enough, they are 100. What's more is next to them are a whole bunch of Tesla superchargers. And I thought, woohoo, I'll plug in there. These are the Tesla only ones, which is why it didn't show up. These are the 150s that don't allow Fords or anyone else signing on to the Tesla plan to be able to use them. There's no reason in waiting for Regina and putting up with all that stress because for the first time, I've got a flow supercharger, 100 kilowatt, actually charging above 70 kilowatts. I think it's charging around 78. So that's just gonna top me up for five or six minutes back on the road. It's gonna make me just a little bit late, but I'm gonna try to catch that up and then I don't have to worry, have any anxiety, or have to go through what I did before and be late by two hours. After coming through BC and Alberta, and here in the prairies as well, this is oil country, no doubt about it. We're always told that 
the engine that drives our economy is oil and gas. Yes, but you know what really keeps us all going? Farmers. And all of this expands. This is the production of food. Whatever you eat, some of it's coming from here. And these hard-working folk, people have no idea what's at stake with farmers. They pay so much for their seed. There's a lot of corporate interests in there as well. And a lot of them capitulate to other forces. They're up before any of us are. They're like baker's hours. But they're not going home early. As I've been driving across the prairies, when I'm all bush and it's, you know, it's getting late and it's getting dark, and I'm driving at night, and I see the combines going, and I see them working the fields, and they're not stopping, and they've been out all freaking day, and they're gonna do it again the next day, and the next day, and the next day, because they've got these really finite windows when things can get done. Your crops can get ruined in a flat second. You can lose your entire crop from a week or two weeks of really bad drought. There's so many limiting factors to a farmer's success, and yet they do it every season year after year, decade after decade, and they pass it down through their family. That's impressive. In Japan, the hierarchy of importance, farmers are worshiped. They're right up at the top of the societal food chain, so to speak. I think we need to do a lot more of that here. There's not a lot of lackeys here. What I love about the prairies, and you always hear about it being flat, but you get these river systems over the millennia carved their way through and effects from the ice age where areas were gouged and then the rivers worked their way back as the glaciers receded and wow big farms of cabbage and blueberries and oh my goodness lots of food growing down this valley which makes a lot of sense as well different climate more moisture rich and loamy and uh, a different microclimate so sure enough I'm seeing vegetable and fruit crops down in this this little valley that's really cool. So you can be driving and it's flat, 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 and then it's just boom! This drama that nails you right between the eyes. And of course, it's even more epic because you've been driving for in flat stuff for four hours. This isn't boding well for my appointment. I managed to get down to 5.15, just a little bit late, and then I've run into either an accident or just major congestion. It's showing up on the Google Maps as a big solid red line. I've arrived here at Utopia Cafe. Nice, oh, beautiful food. It's 5.48 p.m. I'm gonna just turn around and hit the road and get back to Saskatoon as quickly as I can. And we're gonna go to Shell and we're gonna try their recharge system. There are Teslas, there's lots of options here. There's Electrify Canada, but I've been having glitchy things with Electrify Canada. Tesla's been working really good, but they're so bloody expensive. This place looks like it's 30 cents a kilowatt hour cheaper than Tesla. Oh, and last note, we arrived with 90 two kilometers of range left. So I actually gained coming in and I can feel the wind at my back which tells me I'm gonna be driving into it again all the way back. It just loves to just bite my grill. Oh yeah, I don't have a grill. I have officially downloaded app number, was that 17 or 18? I downloaded it, set it up. I'm doing it from a debit card, which is great. As soon as I set it up, they're perfect. They're working great, thank you, Shell. There's a whole bunch. The great news is this is 30 cents a kilowatt hour cheaper than Tesla, and I'm running at about the same speed. We're getting there, 67%, 249 kilometers of range. It's doing really good as far as consistent delivery of electrons, and it's not slowing down. I'm gonna put this up to 80%. We're gonna take a little bit of a different route. I was planning on bringing you into the other flat area of Saskatchewan, I thought, well, You've got to be able to travel. You might go through from Saskatoon to Regina and go, well, that's a big flat area. Um, I want to go see the other big flat area in the east and see if that flat area is any different than this flat area. I mean, who knows what your thing is? Problem is, 
It gives me an ETA back at the hotel at 1.27 a.m. At 6.45 p.m. currently, I'm gonna be charged up, as you can see, saying 90% at 7.17. I'm probably gonna unplug before then. I'm gonna go the way of Moose Jaw, and there are a bunch of fast chargers there, and there's a Tesla fast charger. So we're gonna jack the heck out of it there, and I can be home, so to speak, in three hours and 20 minutes from now. So that gets me home before midnight, and we can do more exploring in Saskatchewan tomorrow, but I'm just too bushed. We've put a thousand kilometers since we got into Saskatchewan already. But limitations, serious limitations here in Saskatchewan about where you can go. There are chargers in different places, but being able to make the jump from one to the other, proving to be difficult. We are at Charged Up, the electric vehicle uh, expo here in Saskatoon. We've been invited to participate, so we've got a little booth set up here. We're going to take a look around all kinds of EV trucks here on site and other little gems. It's fantastic that we're seeing this in the center of Saskatchewan. This has been going for about four years and it keeps growing exponentially every single year. We're going to take a look around. You wouldn't believe who's here, the whole gang. Of course, the most iconic and polarizing and famous of our EV trucks for trucked up EVs, the one that I took a look at myself at purchasing, the Cybertruck. And in person, as everyone says, when you come along and see this in the flesh, or I guess in the metal, you realize just how big this thing is. The camera never seems to do it justice. It's all about the lines, the angles, but it is quite a piece of work. There's a lot of representation out here from Hyundai and Kia and Tesla, quite a number of uh, EVs on site. All these individuals, many of them are owners of these vehicles and uh, they've come out and they're letting people uh, come and check out their vehicles and take them for test drives, which is really awesome. Lots of Model Ys, lots of Model 3s, but also we've got GM represented here and we've got the iconic Hummer EV and SUV. Quite an amazing vehicle. This thing is a beast. And then of course, if you remember, I did my video back in Port Moody with the Silverado Work Truck 4 in Canada sold to a retailer. That was Mike in Port Moody. Well, we've got representation here as well of that Silverado EV and also the Equinox and Blazers, which is pretty awesome to see them all lined up here. When you take a look at my height, and I'm, I mean, I'm not a tall dude, but there's the top of the bed in the Hummer. You kind of get an idea. This is one major beast. Only a four and a half foot bed in this thing, but you're definitely going to need the step. We've got food trucks on site, and guess what's powering both of the food trucks? Oh yeah, no surprise there. This entire operation is being uh, powered on site by electric trucks. So we've got the food trucks, of course, I mentioned earlier, being charged over there, uh, running completely off of that all day long. And it's amazing how long you can charge uh, and still drive away and it barely affects your charge level. In a land so open, you think, well, this, I, can't, I could see for miles. I, I don't, you know, there's no wildlife around here. And then suddenly there's a moose. I haven't been able to catch any on film yet, but this whole, there's actually a lot of moose. And porcupines, yeah, uh, half of them been run over by something, which is really sad. But I've been seeing them waddling down the side of the road. They're going at 0 .0001 mile per hour. They're like quilled beavers. And uh, deer, moose, yeah, and you think, how do they stay hidden? You know, like you can see everything, and somehow you don't see them until they're like right there. This is like freaking ninja moose. We're doing pretty good. It's uh, just a little after three o'clock. We've been on the road since this morning um, and we're doing not bad. Actually, mileage is improving. I'm getting better and better range as I head southeast. Good, good for my crazy crap that I have planned ahead of us. I'm not feeling as nervous, but I'm nervous. I'm watching a storm cloud form far off to the south. It's got to be 50 kilometers away from me, maybe more. Every now and then in these smaller communities you're still seeing grain elevators and red barns and and stuff that i thought was long long gone it's still around some of it's being preserved i gotta keep on the road too i got a lot of driving ahead of me i've only got through uh barely three provinces and i got seven to go holy crap i'm gonna get home for christmas i'll walk in the house and my wife will go and and you are you're not the mailman 
and the milkman's taller. As I cruise down this road, I'm realizing a lot of things about Saskatchewan. There are a lot of tiny little communities scattered all over the place, not just on the main roads. Like a lot of the roads, you branch off and you'll be in the middle of nowhere and then there's this little town that pops up. The problem is getting to them with an electric vehicle. It's gonna be really hard to do so because chargers already is few and far between. And if anyone starts driving EVs in any great number, you're gonna have a charging bottleneck because you've only got like one charger at all of these locations. Tesla has it right. They always put in a big bank of chargers and every single one I've been at, maybe one vehicle or two vehicles and there's like six free. So they've got the right plan. If you're wanting to get to these communities and you charge up, you might get to the community you wanna to go to, but you can't get back. You can understand why, because we're traveling to these major uh, centers or waypoints and then there's a charger there. But there's so much missing. And many would say, well, the same thing you had happen in BC and Alberta. No, off of all of those major routes, I could get there and back in almost every case. We've arrived in Yorkton, Saskatchewan, population 21,000 people. So it's not a small area. This is a city. I think they've got three fast chargers. Again, for population numbers, it's pretty sparse, but at least here it's a good hub and you do have options. But I'm gonna say this, if you don't have access to Tesla in Saskatchewan, you're gonna have some problems because most of the non-Tesla chargers are slow. That means you're gonna be sitting, waiting twice to three times as long as I would be. There may be alternatives, and that's what I'm trying to find, are the alternatives as we go. And there are some, but not a lot. And I'm thinking in some of the locations I've been in, in Saskatchewan, if there hadn't been a Tesla supercharger, it would have really stretched the day. I will not miss the wind. It's, uh, it's not as bad right now, but it actually almost blew me out of my truck. So here we are at Royal Ford in Yorkton, Saskatchewan. We've got two F-150 Lightnings on the lot for sale, which is very cool. Both of the higher trims. I believe we got a Lariat and possibly a Platinum because um, everything else sells these days. But let's take a look. Yeah. But yeah, that's a that's the <laughs> that's the big one, one hundred and four thousand uh, dollars Canadian. Keep in mind. Uh, so these are the top trims, and they've got working fast chargers. I think they're provided by Juice. I think they signed up with Juice. But in any case, I'm sitting here charging. Now they couldn't do the Ford plug and pay, which they do have, but it's down, and it might be because the place is closed. But it is accepting credit cards. So the first reader over here had a little bit of trouble picking up my credit card. Uh, it looked like it was gonna work, but there was another one right here. So I thought, why mess around? I'll just pull over and quickly do it. And boom, I'm charging at 120 kilowatts, which is really good speed for a truck that, you know, rated at 155. So that's fantastic. Wow, what it, that's exactly what we need to have is networks created right across the country and we've got to have everyone participating. And there's a lot of, you know, backwaters, uh, regressive thinking dealerships that need to be slapped around and woken up a little bit because they're holding back their own bloody sales. Does it make sense to go to a Ford charging unit instead of Tesla if you can access Tesla? Yeah, very much so. Here's why. We were in Winyard. Win, Winyard. I'm pronouncing it wrong. I pronounce every single one wrong, I think. And Tesla charged me like 75 cents a kilowatt. Like, just freaking extortion. And of course, you can become a member and then it's cheaper. No, it's not because they bill you $16.99 or $18.99 or something a month for doing nothing. For basically be just being a member. And for being a member, then you get a lower rate. But you better be using your Tesla superchargers all the time. But then it says a limit for so many charges per day or so many charges per month. There's a, <laughs> at this, uh, better rate. Here I am parked at Ford, 120 kilowatt. I'm already past 80%. So I've charged approximately the same amount that I charge in Winyard. In fact, maybe even a little bit more here than there. I'm at about eight bucks. So we're going to go double check that. I was at like 18 or 20 for the same amount. So picture that. Pick, picture yourself pulling into a gas station. Gas station A is $3.50 and gas station B across the street is seven bucks. I mean, that's how stupid that is. My advice, any chance that you can charge at 100 kilowatts or faster at a charger and it's easy to use for you, use that one rather than Tesla and you'll save yourself tons of money on the road. Look at that, 
36 cents a kilowatt, kilowatt versus 85 cents a kilowatt. I mean, it's not even double, it's well above double. So my whole session is 10 bucks, $10.25 to drive another 300 kilometers. Okay, I, I just saw a sign that has me a little perplexed. It was an arrow pointing to Okapawase, I mean, I'm definitely pronouncing that wrong, Okapawase Ski Resort, Downhill Ski Resort. So, do they hook you with a harness and a bungee cord and and pull you by skidoo? I got it. It's a gorge. It's it, it's it's the prairie. Probably has a river running through it. Carved itself a can little canyon, and they built a ski hill on the side of the canyon. Those are pretty short runs. I did go up a, a hill a little while back. Well, a hill is a little strong, but in Saskatchewan, I think it'd be called a hill. In Alberta, it'd probably be called a rise. In BC, it would be called a speed bump. Just the fact that it stated that there was a downhill ski hill really makes me want to go see it. But we're pressed for time. I have to get to Brandon, Manitoba tonight, and then I've got to spend at least six to eight hours editing to get my Alberta video out, which means I'm going to be up until about three o'clock in the morning. So I think I'm going to have to forego the ski hill visit. We've arrived off of 22 East. We're heading down Highway 9 South. This is our last major turn, getting us to Whitewood, Saskatchewan, before we leave the province for Manitoba. The community that I pass through to make the turn is called Stockholm. I don't think Sweden would be very happy. Uh, the main attraction seems to be a church and a graveyard. We have reached our junction of Whitewood. This is where we again meet up with the Trans-Canada Highway and make our way due east, which is good because I'm being buffeted from the west with winds, hurricane level winds or tropical storm winds, 120 kilometer an hour sustained winds, 70 mile an hour winds coming across the prairie. I've actually been pushed with my wheels straight right into the other lane. Coming up on the rumble bars here, we're gonna enter Whitewood. They've got a couple of chargers. We're gonna to top up and then we finish the final leg. So let's get that done and hit the road. So the most ironic thing is Petro Canada has put out welcome to Canada's electric highway. And they show this nice line all the way across to Newfoundland. Well, I'll tell you that first line from BC to Saskatchewan is generally broken. So I think we're gonna see them improve it. I think they're starting to get the picture, but this is nice. The only thing is it's, it's advertising itself at 200 kilowatts and we are, you know, ramped up. We should be fully ramped by now. It's been three minutes and we're sitting at 88 kilowatts. That's a far cry from up to 200 kilowatts. What does that mean? It says the units can only charge one at a time. The other one's a Chatamo, 100 kilowatt. So we should be doing a little bit better than this. We got garbage cans, we got squeegees, we got towels, we got wipes, we've got water for doing the windshields, we got a convenience door, we got bathrooms. Yeah, guys, you know that thing that's worked for gas stations for 130 years? Well, at least the gas stations have said, maybe we should just make them like gas stations. We have the wind at our backs. We're gonna see what kind of difference that makes to the range. We've been fighting our range numbers all through Saskatchewan. Now we've got that massive wind blowing at, you know, it's gale force stuff hitting us. And now we've got it pushing on the back of the truck. As the sun sets over the horizon behind me in the west, so does my cross Canada trucked up leg here in Saskatchewan. We're heading now over to the Manitoba border and it's time to decide the outcome of our trucked up mission across this province. And here it is. British Columbia and Alberta ran the gauntlet and survived and came out the other side with a trucked up stamp of approval. And here's how I determine whether or not a province gets that trucked up stamp. It's about one, infrastructure, two, reliability of that infrastructure, and three, frequency of that infrastructure. And I hate to say, but on all three levels, Saskatchewan has failed. 
Saskatchewan will not be receiving the trucked up stamp of approval. Now that doesn't mean that there's a lot of positive things happening in the province, especially in urban centers. I am so impressed by what the EV associations are doing there to try to raise awareness, to try to build that infrastructure out, to try to get cooperation out of different organizations to make that happen. But here it is, the utility, Saskatchewan Power, Sask Power, is doing little to nothing, maybe even holding back the advancement of electrification of Saskatchewan. And the reality is 20% of all vehicles sold today in Canada are electrified. And if you think you're gonna be able to hold that wave back and use protectionism to stop it like little pockets have in Alberta, it's not gonna work. People are gonna spend their money, they're gonna set up their business, they're gonna do their tourism somewhere else. So if you're wanting to participate, if you're wanting to embrace that revenue coming from a large number of people, you better start thinking ahead rather than looking over your shoulder. There are some highlights. All of the urban centers have great infrastructure within them, but getting from one region to another is a real challenge. I was biting my nails off and my sphincter was closed for most of my northern BC tour. But that was in northern BC in the middle of nowhere with hundreds of kilometers between anything from one place to another. And as of October 1st, the switch has been hit and the whole electric highway is now live in that province. It wasn't when I was there and I could still do it. There is nothing north of Prince Albert but you wouldn't base my judgment on that. Throw in environmental conditions like the wind and the straight speed where you're not using all of those benefits of an electric vehicle. You're just at high speeds all the time, straight line into wind. And then you throw in very severe winter conditions and you just don't have an environment where you can freely travel around with an electric vehicle. And there's all the municipalities, tons of towns and villages where a intermediary charger would work beautifully and there's nothing. I was talking to a wonderful gentleman who has a Model Y in Saskatoon and he can't make the trip right across to Alberta because there's no intermediary charger like in Kindersley where you need these things to be. But as soon as you get over the border, you've got Wainwright, you've got Drumheller. So even though those chargers, some of them were down when I went through and I couldn't do the leg because of that, that's how sparse that little pocket is in Alberta. That's all of Saskatchewan. And the other thing too is reliability. A lot of these chargers under repair or not working properly. I wish Saskatchewan all the best. Tesla superchargers, if you could access them, even then, you don't have full access to most of the province as you would in other provinces that I've been through. I hope the sun doesn't set on Saskatchewan and it leaves itself in the dark. The annals of history is the place not to go to, the drive-through province. I hope that's not the case. I wanna thank you deeply. If you feel this content is worthwhile, has value, please click the like and subscribe and bell notification icon below. This is a very costly, time-consuming, and resource-chomping venture that I'm on, and I can only do it with your support. So if you can in any way help with a donation below, support me on Patreon with a cup of coffee, or buy one of my t-shirts, that makes a big difference to supporting this channel in the future. As always, thank you so much for watching.